don't just, if you do a structural diagram, it's just H dash F. You show the atoms and the bonds, that's it. All right. Who wants to come up and do lithium fluoride? Yes. When you have a metal, it's an ionic <clears throat> compound, therefore there's a transfer of electrons, zero sharing. So this bottom one is how you draw Lewis-Stott structures for ionic compounds. You have a metal with no valence electrons, a positive charge because it lost, the number indicates how many. Fluorine, your, your non-metal, has a full octet. It gained an electron, so it's negative. The one indicates how many valence electrons it received. Square brackets. We good? That's review. How about your BH3? Anything weird about that? BH3? No? You know what I want to ask you now? What's that? Are we going to talk about the bonding capacity? Okay, what's the bonding capacity for boron? <coughs> it is three, right? It's one of the exceptions that we talked about last year. So, B, H, three. Medloids tend to share. And that's it. In a while, you'll know the shape to draw. Dan? What's that? Do you have a question? Oh, no. Uh, can you add the dots, too, if you want? Could you do... Like the lone pairs? Thing? Lone pairs. There's no lone pairs. We're out of electrons. <coughs> We're done. Boron only has three. It does. Nope. Wrong column. Um, Nitrogen and below are your five. It's in column 13. Okay, so metalloids will tend to share. We're good? I was listening to Mrs. WP and I wanted to do it exactly how Mrs. WP said. I would have gone, okay, carbon's got four, oxygen's got six, there's two of them for a total of 16 electrons. Now I know the maximum number I have to place. Carbon's got the highest combining passage, so it's in the middle. I'm going to put a bond in. Now, it says to place two electrons between each bonded atom. Okay, did that. Two, four. So uh, that leaves me with 12 electrons left. Then it says place remaining electron pairs around the terminal <coughs> atom. So here we go. I'll make them nice and big so she can see because she's almost blind. I've got 12. There's two atoms. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now oxygen's got eight. Look at that. I've used up 12 electrons. Okay. However, because I'm following the rules, I notice carbon only has four electrons around it. I know it wants eight because it clearly states on the sheet carbon will follow the octet rule. So the next rule says if a central atom doesn't have a full octet convert one or more pairs to a double or triple bond. Oxygen cannot make a triple bond so the most it can make is two. So then I'm going to have this pair and this pair, and now I'm 
double check because I like to be right. I don't like to be wrong. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. That's how many I had to place. Oxygen, 2, 4, 6, 8. 2, 4, 6, 8. Carbon, 2, 4, 6, 8. As far as I know, I've done this correctly. I followed the rules on the sheet. I'm telling you now, don't skip steps. This is called resonance. When you can have, uh, when you basically have the same structure, but the one that has the double bond is different. So you have to have the same atoms, but we indicate resonance structures with a double arrow. So it could be that that double bond is actually on that oxygen. Yep. Because there are three possible combinations. So then the other one would be You're likely to see a question, whoops, you're likely to see a question like, do any of these have resonance structures? If so, draw them. Does the arrow have to be straight? Like mine? It's just a double-headed arrow. Okay. So there's just basically, sorry, I'm not feeling the art today. You draw double arrows indicating the three different structures. If I had a central atom and there were four oxygens and only one of them was double bonded, I would have four resonant structures because that double bond could be any of them. We don't know which one it is. So we, it's basically in between, okay? How about the ammonium? <coughs> you want to come up and do it? Do you? Well done. So a coordinate covalent bond occurs when one atom <coughs> donates both electrons to a covalent bond. One atom donates both electrons to a covalent bond. So what happened here was I had ammonia Is ammonia an acid or a base? Base. Okay. And along came what do acids produce? What do acids produce? What ion do you know you get from every single acid? H plus, along comes an H plus. That H plus is plus because it's got no electrons. It's a plus one charge. It lost its electron. It's with the negative ion part of its formula. So this comes along and it's, ooh, you've got a pair of lone pair of electrons and it can bond there through a coordinate covalent bond. The nitrogen donates both electrons to the hydrogen. Yes? So where does that one electron the hydrogen go? It's, let's say it came from HCl. Chlorine's got it. Whatever the negative ion was in the acid, it's got the electron. What, what if it's just an H4 by itself? Can't have NH4 just by itself. It's, it would always be part of a salt or forms in a reaction. You can't have, I can't go to the shelf and get ammonium. Yeah. So does, 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 that, does that not apply to the other hydrogen as well? So like, you know how you said like, H, like 
They're sharing their electrons right here. It's sharing with nitrogen. These are regular covalent bonds, right? These come from nitrogen. And the empty ones came from each hydrogen. So it was like the four hydrogens come, it uses both of them? It uses both of those because it's got none. And where does that extra electron go? To the, to, for HCl? So let's say K, the H plus came from HCl. It's on the Cl because you'll have HCl minus left over. The Cl only needs one, right? Yep. But it's going to get it from that H right there. It got it from that H. Oh, which is the H in the thing? Yeah, oh. which then came off because Remember, all acids produce H+. Plus. You'll have H+, plus and a negative ion. The negative ion took the electrons from the H. I say electrons in case there were two H's. Okay? So this is going to be TVS for CO2. So how many total does carbon want all together? Eight. How about oxygen? Then you do the valence electrons. Okay, you with me? So how many total do we have? 24. How many valence? 16. Okay, what's the difference between those two numbers? So how many bonds? So we know we're going to have four bonds. These are our two electrons, sorry, our two terminal atoms. We know carbon goes in the middle because it's got the highest combining capacity, but I need to make a total of four bonds, which kind of helps us. So now we've used the four bonds. How many electrons have we used? Eight. So subtract that amount from your total valence electrons. How many are left? So place them. And this part's the same as the other one. You place them on your terminal atoms first to fulfill the octet rule. So I've got eight. Each oxygen happens to need four more. I've used up all my electrons. Double check my structure. Eight, 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 two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. I can only place sixteen electrons. So TVS is nice because it tells you how many bonds you need to have in your structure. And then after that, you follow the same rules as you were doing before. You put your bonds in, subtract that amount from the total valence, and then fulfill the outer. Adams octet first. You okay with that? This is going to be really useful when I give you an a structure like acetic acid because you'll be able to calculate how many bonds you need and that will really help in the organizing. Okay? Now, do I want you to do H2S and SF6. So you're going to do So, TVS 
will work for this H2S because it's followed its combining capacity. So you can use TVS. TVS will give you the wrong structure if you try doing it this way because it has six bonds, not two. It's got an expanded octet, so you have to go the old way. So, I want to bring you up to grade 12 speed. We are now using this way as the old way, which is now the new way. It's old but new. But you'll notice that the first five items or rules are exactly the same as the grade 11 sheet. Figure out which one's the central atom. It's the one with the highest combining capacity. Count the number of valence electrons. <coughs> For polyatomics, add if it's negative. Subtract if it's positive. Place a bonding pair between the central atom and the surrounding. Subtract this from the total number. Use the remaining electrons to complete the octet around each atom if there aren't enough. Then what you do is you place extras on the central atom. If you end up that you have more electrons than you place around the terminal atoms, they go on your central atom. That's new. So if you, if you find you've got an excess on the end, put them together in pairs on your central atom. Calculate the formal charges. Oh, brand new. Okay, we're going to do the formal charges on, let's do carbonate. Yeah? No? Formal charges. We'll do it on H2S first. Keep it simple. Okay. When you do formal charges, you're basically checking your structure. You want formal charges to add up to the total charge on the atom or ion and have as many as close to zero as you possibly can. So, formal charges. So if we do H2S, whoops. Okay, the formal charge, you do it on each atom. So sulfur. It says the number of valence electrons. How many valence electrons for sulfur? Six. Subtract for that the number of lone electrons, or the number of electrons in lone pairs. Four. From that, subtract the number of bonds sulfur made. Ooh, that's looking good. It's zero. Hydrogen. There's two of them, so whatever answer we get, we're going to multiply it by two. So, how many valence electrons? How many lone? Zero. How many bonds? Each hydrogen has how many? One. So, again, zero. So, zero times two is? Zero. We add these up, we get zero. What's the total charge on this? Zero. Beautiful. We know this is the correct structure because it has all the electrons and our formal charges back us up. You want the formal charge to be close to zero as possible. If it was two, you'd do some bonds. Okay. Do S O four two minus. You can't. You can't. 
Sulfur has four oxygens bonded to it. If it was following the combining capacity, it would just be two. You got it. So, six times five is 30, 32. Right? 32 electrons, sulfur. Six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four. I've used up all my electrons. Square brackets. Two minus looks pretty good, but it's not right. No. And I know that because I do formal charges. So, formal charge. Sulfur is six. How many electrons in lone pairs? How many bonds? Ooh. That's plus two, we want it to be zero. Okay, all of our oxygens are the same. They're single bonds, and there's four of them. Valence electrons, six minus, how many electrons in lone pairs? Minus one bond, negative one. There's four of them. Plus two and negative four add up to be negative two, so that part's okay, but this is not. None of these are zero. So what I want you to do, see what happens if you change a lone pair into another bond, like make a double bonded oxygen. Try, this is your homework for tonight. Try and work this structure out so that you have a zero, as many zeros as you can on formal charges, and they have to add up to negative two. Okay, so how do we get formal charges to be better? So we're going to look at We've got S, O4, 2 minus, 32 electrons. So what happens if we make one of these oxygen bonds a double bond? So we still need to put in electrons. We've used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 electrons now. So we've got 22 electrons left to place. Two up here, two lone pairs, so four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. So now we've used 22 electrons, extra electrons. So in total, we've got eight, 16, 24, 32 electrons used. So now formal charges sulfur is 6 minus no lone pairs minus 5 bonds equals plus 1. Better? Not great. We now have we don't have to write formal charge each time. We now have oxygen. We've got a double bonded oxygen and we've got three single bonded oxygen. So double bonded valence electrons are six. The oxygen that contains the double bond has 
two lone pairs for a total of four electrons minus two bonds. Well, that's looking better. That's a zero. Three singles, six valence electrons minus six electrons in lone pairs minus one is negative one. So negative one. So three times negative one is negative three plus the one, right? We've got negative three here, three times negative one because there's three single bonded oxygens and then we've got a plus one so that gives a total charge of negative two which is okay but it's still not great. Let's see if we can get sulfur down to zero. If we do this but two here, two pairs here, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we have 32 electrons to place. So we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. So we've used up all our electrons. So that's good. Formal charge. Sulfur is 6 minus no lone pair electrons minus two, 6 bonds. Looking much better. Double bonded oxygens, we've got two of them. So it's six minus four electrons in lone pairs minus two bonds is zero, looking way better. Two single bonded oxygens. So it's six minus six electrons in lone pairs minus one is negative one times two because there's two of them total is negative 2, which happens to match this charge here, that charge there. We've got zeros, more zeros than we had before, so this is the best Lewis structure out of all of them. And of course there'll be a little bit of resonance. So this is going to go against what you did before because now sulfur is surrounded by, you've got four here, two here, two here, four here. So four, eight, 12, 12 electrons. I'd say that's an expanded octet. So use your formal charges to figure out if you have the right structure and you're going to find this comes up when we have structures that are polyatomic ions a lot of the time. Okay. WP out.